Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we will be discussing about support vector machines. Uh, this was one of the most requested video by all the subscribers. So I'm going to discuss this and again, this will be divided into multiple parts because there are a lot of things to understand over here. So make sure that you watch this particular video till the end. So let's go ahead. Now support vector machine, first of all, we need to understand what kind of problem statement it actually solves in, with respect to supervised machine learning. It is useful in solving both classification and regression problem statement. Okay. Now, the next thing is that what all we are going to learn in this particular topic, in this particular part, right? We are going to understand what is support vectors. We are going to understand hyperplane. What is marginal distance? What is linear separable points, non-linear separable points? And we are also going to see some of the examples which I have actually drawn over here. So let's go ahead. Now, the main aim of the support vector machine, suppose if I consider a classification problem, I'll also be discussing about regression problem in the upcoming parts. But now we'll just take an example of classification problem. We'll just understand the geometrical intuition. Now, since this is a classification problem, you can see guys, we can easily separate these two classes points, right? Suppose if I consider this as my positive points, okay, and this is my negative points. So I can actually classify this particular points with a hyperplane. This, this center line is basically a hyperplane. We have also seen in logistic regression, uh, in linear regression, how we can actually create a hyperplane, right? But this is just not the end, okay? Support vector machine makes sure that when you are creating this hyperplane, right? So suppose this is my hyperplane over here. Apart from this, it also creates two margin lines, okay? And these two margin lines will be having some distance, you know, so that it will be easily linearly separable for both the classification points, right? Now, suppose if I consider this hyperplane, it makes sure that there will be one more plane that will be parallel to this particular hyperplane. And this particular hyperplane that you see, which is parallel to this one, right? It will be passing through one of the nearest positive or the negative point. So after creating this hyperplane, you know, what we do is that we also create two parallel planes, okay? The one in this dotted lines and the other one which is dotted line and both this particular line will be parallel to the hyperplane that is actually created. Now, when we are creating this hyperplane, you know, this one dotted hyperplane, which is parallel to the main hyperplane over here, we make sure that it passes through one of the nearest positive points. So over here, this red one is one of the nearest positive point. Similarly, when we are passing, we are creating the another hyperplane towards the negative direction. You can see that which passes through the nearest, uh, you know, negative point from there, we'll actually create this particular hyperplane. That is the intuition behind support vector machine. So support vector machine does not just only focus on creating one hyperplane, but instead it also creates two parallel hyperplane such in, in such a way that one of the hyperplane will be passing to the nearest positive point and the other hyperplane will be passing to the nearest negative point. Now, when we compute this distance that is D positive and D minus, this whole distance is basically called as margin, marginal distance, okay? This dotted line, we can consider it as margin and the distance between these two parallel lines, you know, in the dotted line is called as margin. Now, what is the significance of this particular margin? Remember guys, we always have to create a generalized model. You know, whenever we are applying a classification problem statement, we always have to create a generalized model. Now in the generalized model, you know, we usually get a better accuracy for any kind of data that we actually get. Now, when we are doing this separation with respect to the positive and negative, you know, any points, any points that come above this hyperplane will be actually classified to this particular point. Any point that will be below this particular hyperplane that will be uh, considered as a negative point. Now this hyperplane is actually giving us a cushion to actually divide this positive and negative in a better way. So in the test data support, some of the points comes over here, right? This is just like a cushion which can easily classify and say that, okay, it belongs to the positive class. If it comes away, it, it belongs to the negative class. So this distance is pretty much important. But still, the, the, the other question rises that Apart from this hyperplane, we can also create multiple hyperplanes, right? We can also create some hyperplanes somewhere over here like this, right? We can create this one single line, right? Like this. Still, it is being able to divide these particular points. But understand, when I create a hyperplane, I also have to focus on this particular margin, right? In this particular case, when I'm doing this, I can show you this particular example over here, right? Suppose I've taken the same points over here and I've actually used this particular hyperplane to actually create a separation line between the positive and the negative class. But when I create this particular marginal uh, planes itself over here, what is happening? This marginal plane distance is very, very less. 
our main aim should be that we should maximize this particular marginal plane okay so in based on that we actually select the best hyperplane which has the maximum marginal plane or marginal distance you can say okay so that is how it is actually and remember this all techniques up gets applied in linear separable points you know over here we can linearly separate this particular point that basically means we can actually create a straight line and we can actually uh, you know classify these two points right so this linear straight line is basically using uh, we are using it to actually linearly classify this particular points what if if we have non-linear separable we'll be discussing about that okay so the main focus should be that when we are discussing about marginal distance whenever we create a hyperplane okay and those kind of hyperplane should be selected wherein this marginal distance should be maximum so if i take this two particular example one way i have actually used this for linearly separate separating in this particular way and the other way is somewhere over here now this particular distance i can say it as d1 this particular distance i can say it as d2 right now in this particular day, which of this particular hyperplane will get selected whether this one or this one right along with this marginal plane so definitely over here you can see that the d2 is very very much greater than what d1 so we may basically use this particular technique to actually divide this uh, div uh, or use this hyperplane to actually divide this particular points because now here we get a more generalized model this will also work well but we will not get a much generalized model that basically means for my new test data this will definitely give a lot of errors when compared to this kind of hyperplane that we have so going to this first of all we have discussed about hyperplanes and remember guys in two dimensional we'll just not say hyperplanes we'll just say it as a straight line okay but in three three dimensions in four dimensions we may say it as a hyperplane because we will be using a kind of planes over there to actually divide those points okay so we have discussed about hyperplane we have discussed about marginal distance marginal distance is nothing but the two parallel lines that i'm actually creating with respect to the most nearest positive point and the most nearest negative point the distance between them is actually the marginal distance this i can say it as a marginal positive plane marginal negative plane because this is nearest to the negative and the positive point so these two topics have been covered now we have also discussed about linearly separable linearly separable basically means we can easily uh, separate this particular point by just drawing a straight line okay non-linear separable basically means this is the best example here you can see that we we cannot just draw a straight line right we cannot just draw a straight line to divide this particular points anyhow if we try to do it our accuracy will be less than 50 percent less than or equal to 50 percent right because anyhow you can see some of the points are over here and some of the points are over here so they are actually intermixed so we'll also try to understand how to solve this particular problem okay now one important thing is about support vectors what is this particular support vector now understand guys we have actually created this particular plane we have selected the maximum distance now based on this which is the nearest positive point that is passing through marginal plane m1 and marginal plane m2 the nearest positive point and the nearest negative point right and it may be multiple number of points also i may have multiple number of points these are kind of called as support vectors so support vectors are nothing but they are the points that is actually passing to the through the marginal plane that we have actually created in parallel to the hyperplane that is found out right so based on that and it may be having multiple number of points not one or two it may be three or four any number of points that are passing through this particular marginal plane we will be considering those as uh, you know we will be considering those as support vectors so this is my support vector this is my support vector and these all are also pretty much important guys because this helps us to determine the maximum distance of the marginal plane and remember finally we have to create a generalized model now still one question basically arises how do we solve this kind of problem statement and remember guys uh, this hyperplane you know how it is actually getting created uh, with respect to the hyperplane i'll also be discussing in the upcoming parts now but still we did not understand how do we solve this kind of problem remember this is a two dimensional graph right two dimensional graph with respect to the positive and the negative statement so i can i can in order to solve this support vector machine uses a technique called as svm kernels now this svm kernels the main aim is that it tries to convert the two dimension or i'll say low dimension low dimension into a high dimension okay now what do what do i mean by high dimension just just take this particular example guys i'm just going to rub this so that you'll be able to understand 
okay suppose if i consider a three dimensional graph and if i try to convert this two dimension into three dimension so okay suppose some of the points of my black points are over here right and if i convert this into three dimension i can actually create a hyperplane between this right so now when i convert this two dimension to three dimension this will basically get converted like this and between that i can actually create a smaller hyperplane which is basically a conversion and here what we are doing we are converting and i'll just name this as uh, svm kernels the SVM kernel's main aim is actually to convert a lower dimension into a higher dimension so that we will be easily able to, uh, you know, classify these particular points by a hyperplane itself. Okay. And with respect to this hyperplane also, I'll be getting my marginal plane, which looks like this, and it will be easily separable. But still understand guys, we have just understood the basic understanding of support vector machines. In the future class, we'll also be discussing about a lot of maths thing about SVM kernels, different types of SVM kernels but i hope you have understood please do remember this particular terminologies that is support vectors hyperplane mar marginal distance linearly separable non-linear separable again understand that our main aim is to create a generalized model by just not creating a hyperplane but instead we are creating a marginal distance you know with respect to the marginal planes that are created with respect again with respect to the positive and the negative points right so the higher the marginal distance the more generalized our model is but definitely this will not be possible with respect to this kind of non-linear separable points for this we usually apply svm kernels wherein we convert our low dimension into high dimension and lower dimension it may be like two dimension to three dimension or two dimension to four dimension by creating new data points or we'll try to you know move it in this particular way now here you can see that this two dimension is getting converted into three dimension we easily we can actually create a hyperplane so this was the basic understanding of support vector machines in the upcoming classes i'll be discussing about a lot of maths how to actually apply this svm kernels what are the different svm kernels but just go through this read a lot of blogs and try to understand and yes i'll also be discussing how you can solve regression problem statements also so yes this was all about this particular video and this is just the part one in upcoming session, we'll also be discussing about SVM kernels. We'll understand some of the maths over here, what, how this marginal plane is actually created. So this is all about this particular video. I hope you like it. Please do subscribe to the channel. If you have not already subscribed, I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day. Thank you one and all. Bye-bye.